it's a dream job, but it's also a very, very tiring job. But it is also a job that is, is your life. You, you, you pretty much don't have a life other than being a coach. Sito Tianqing, my alias is John Gok. Right here is the handsome guy himself, Mr. John. John Gok, the ex-head coach for Washington Justice and also uh, LA Gladiators. I am currently the coach for the Overwatch team, the national team in Singapore. I coached the 2019 national team and then this year I've been coaching the national team for maybe one to two months. Back when I was an engineering student, every year there would be this thing called like the, in the InterVarsity Campus Cup. And what they do is they pit universities versus polys versus other universities, any schools essentially. And I helped out my college team. That helped me figure out that I like coaching. It's kind of like engineering, it's kind of like science because when you coach, you take notes, you analyze players, you analyze the current working strategies. Because I enjoyed coaching the university team so much, I decided why not help out a couple of local teams that are at least a couple of high level local teams. So that became my hobby. During the day, I would, I would study engineering and in, at night, I would essentially help these teams that, uh, that I was the coach of. So I went from coaching a university team to coaching a local team. And I went from local teams to an Australian team, Australian team that was in a amateur pro scene. When, when they made the finals, I, had to fly, I, went, I went to Australia for a week. I think subsequently, I was headhunted. The first team, LA Gladiators, second team, Washington Justice. They reached out and said, is this something you're interested in doing? If you are, we would like to try you out. We would like to hear about your thoughts of in the game. And we would like to see how you compare to maybe the other people trying out as well. I had a couple of interviews with them. And subsequently, they made me an offer to join the Pro League with them. My parents are essentially Singaporean parents. What they want you to do is, you know, get a degree first, and then after that, we see what you can do whatever you want to do from there, right? And like typical Singaporean parents, they, they would like you to be an engineer, doctor, or lawyer. So what I did was I dropped out of school, I dropped out of NTU. I told them that, okay, on the side, I would reapply to another university. I applied to SUTD. Then I said, okay, this is where I'm going to try being a professional coach. Well, this is my backup plan. I thought I was ready. I've done my work. I have coached many different high-level teams in the region. Definitely, uh, I was excited to be given a chance in the Overwatch League. I definitely tried playing first, but even when I play, essentially, I was a player that liked the, the strategy or the fight to go in a certain way. If something wasn't right, I would tell my team, okay guys, this is not how it should be played. Uh, and even in the past, when I played soccer, I played floorball, there will be ways that I felt that if we play like this, we should win. If we don't play like this and we lose, this is why we lost. I think even as a player, I wanted to manage the team, or at least I wanted to have some say in how the team should play. And, and I felt like that was the best way to learn from the game. Because if we just play without being introspective about what we do and about the mistakes that we make, uh, then you, you can only lose. And that's the same for sports, that's the same for esports, that's the same for computer games. So I felt that as a player, there was not much I could do for the team, but as a coach, I could essentially make the team stronger through, the, through all these ways. I was in a very niche category as a coach. So not only was I in esports, I was doing it not even as a player, but as a support staff, as a coach, right? So I think this was something that my parents also, or even for myself, is something I was definitely a little bit hesitant about. How much money would this pay me? Was this a sustainable career? Was this something that I, I feel I could do year after year without being burned out? Would I still enjoy the game and would I still enjoy my time, especially when I was away from my family, my friends and my loved ones? I know of friends who wish they were a professional soccer player. And in the end, that dream died. They went on to stable careers or, or decently well-paying careers. And they're happy. They're, they're happy. They have their own, you know, they have their flat. They're living their own happy life. But I have friends that wonder, you know, what would have happened? Would it be something that I would enjoy a lot more? As opposed to, you know, staying the course and, and following a career path that I think every parent want their kids to follow. I remember thinking to myself, this was like a, a choice that I didn't want to make. I want to have my kick and eat it. I want to become a professional coach. And when I was tired of it, I wanted to have the option to still come back and finish my degree. I think I'm a pretty balanced coach, I would say. Korean coaches are generally, they rule with an iron fist. What they say goes. European coaches and American coaches, they tend to be more democratic. I would say I'm a coach that's somewhere in the middle. I'm not very strict and I try to listen to everyone's opinion. It's a dream job, but it's also a very, very tiring job. 
a lot of coaches become somewhat of like a therapist slash counsellors. The things that we do often involves listening to a player, understanding where they come from, and then coming up with a plan to fix that problem. But it is also a job that is, is your life. You, you, you pretty much don't have a life other than being a coach. You also need to spend a lot of time uh, discussing about the game. Discuss what went wrong in the game as well. And that discussion normally takes a lot of time. The day might end at 2 a.m., that kind of thing. So at 2, 3 a.m., you, you go to sleep, you wake up, rinse, repeat, and it all starts over again. We are always the team with the least amount of uh, overseas experience. So I think the main focus is to make sure that the Singaporean players are confident. You know, my job is to make sure I, I raise them up to a level that can contest with overs, overseas team. So I think life is uh, unpredictable enough that it's something that I, I don't know what I'll still be doing, what I'll still be doing next year, etc. Et we'll we, we see. I think it's something I enjoy very much, but I, yeah, we'll see.